Hey everybody, hey, hey, hey. So glad you guys are with me here on our midweek meetup. Hey, I'm repping the 404. Now, um, y'all know that's Atlanta, even though I, you know, we live in outside of Atlanta in the 770, the, the 678. Uh, but hey, no doubt the 404 is the ATL, Atlanta, Hotlanta. So, hey, uh, glad to have you here on Midweek Meetup. We're gonna be talking today about something that might sound a little counterintuitive. There's so much going on in our world right now and things that we need to be focused on and focus our prayers, uh, our prayers. I'm encouraging either on Wednesday or Thursday, sometime during the midweek, for all of you to be fasting and praying, praying and fasting. Prayer is our number one uh, thing that we do uh, in the midst of times that are tough. And then fasting goes along with it and complements it and empowers it. You know, the Bible says, if my people, if, conditionary, if we humble ourselves and pray, seek his face, turn from our wicked ways, he hears, he forgives, he'll heal our land. We're praying for what's going on in Haiti. We're praying for what's going on in Afghanistan. We're praying for what's going on when it comes down to the, the COVID variant that's, that's affecting so many that's around us nowadays and in our world, as well as just our world at large. Uh, we live in a fallen world, but we know that the Lord has a plan. Jesus is that plan. And that one day, way out in the hopefully not too distant future, but we know that Jesus is coming back. And so we're we're believing that. But until he does, we're going to rule and have reign and dominion. But here's the counterintuitive thought. We have to have joy here on this planet. You know, joy is not something that is circumstance driven. Happiness at times can be, and that's that's happiness is a good word, but it's not a it's not a spirit filled word. Spiritful word is joy. Happiness is something that can be based on temporary circumstances. So it comes and it goes. But joy is something that's ever present. If you're in Christ, Christ is in you. Well, we know that the fruit of the Spirit, one aspect of that fruit out of love, ultimately one is joy. Nehemiah 8.10 says, For the joy of the Lord is our strength. Joy and strength are two things that work together well. Um, you know, like peanut butter and, and jelly, right? They work well together. Well, in the Spirit, joy and strength are are connected or infused. You've got supernatural joy, you're going to have natural strength. If your natural strength is robbed, oftentimes it'll also try to work its way out into your supernatural joy. They work together. They work together. So let's talk about joy in the midst of really a lot of things in our world right now that seem to be very upside down, but we've been living that now for a minute, so you understand that. But I want to challenge you about not just surviving, but thriving in the season that we're in. And a part of thriving is knowing that we have joy, 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 come on, some of y'all know where I'm going, joy, joy down in our heart, down in our heart to stay. And it's not joy that the world gave, and so the world does not have the authority to take it unless we relinquish it, unless we give over to circumstances, things we see, versus what we know. God is good. We know that. He is faithful. We know that. He is able to be trusted. Come on, somebody, give me an amen. We know that. Let me just give you a couple things before I get into this because I just feel it bubbling, literally just uh, bubbling inside of me. So I want to I want to speak this to you today. But remember, we have our in-person services. Many of you are coming out and being a part of those services. Thank you for those of you that are coming out and being there with us on a regular, semi-regular basis there at the AMC Dine-In Theater. It's AMC 11 Dine-In Theater there off Exenic Highway in Lawrenceville, Georgia. It is really a blessing to be in that location. The facility is outstanding. Uh, the cleanliness that is required and that is upheld standard-wise uh, through the AMC, uh, largest movie theater chain in the world, um, is second to none. So sanitation, things like this, even against COVID, all that kind of stuff, uh, we couldn't be in a more safe environment on the regular. So hopefully many of you are considering to come and be out if you haven't. And if you have, we hope you come back. Bring somebody, invite somebody. Uh, but it is. I was glad, like David said, when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord and be a part of those services. Hebrews chapter 10 talks about it as well. Don't forsake the assembling of the body. So if you're able and you feel encouraged, come be with us at 1030 this coming Sunday there at the AMC Theater. It's going to be a great day. We're going to have uh, a lot of things taking place. Uh, but hey, listen, we do have online church and I'm not diminishing that. Thank you so many of you that are part of our online church. If you would, please consider do a couple things. Just don't watch, but also share, share the broadcast. If you're on Facebook, you can share that to your Facebook page. Share that with your friends. Share that with your contacts. If you're on YouTube, first subscribe to our YouTube channel, just so now that you're just here and there checking out what's going on. But when you subscribe, it will alert you to new content that we're putting out. Just hit that little bell there in the corner as you subscribe. And then that puts you there uh, so that you're able to uh, set you up where you're able to get new content. Great. Also, you can talk about that. Share that. Talk about it. 
Um, those of you that are part of Hope and Life and have been a part of our Hope and Life, go to our go to uh, Hope and uh, Hope and Life moving forward. That's a private uh, page there for all of you that are Hope and Life members to be a part, so that you can be aware of uh, other content that's coming out. Apply to that, and then we'll get you in on that as well. Just a lot of ways to be involved. We hope to see you either online or in person this coming Sunday, which is the last Sunday of August. Uh, so let's be a part of that because I know God has something specific to say to us. God's got something to say to the world, but he's also got something to say to the what? The 404, the ATL. You want to be a part of what's going on. All right, let's talk about joy. I've got my B-I-B-I-L-E here with me, and I'm here in the car, as you can see that already. I'm parked actually down here at our amenities area uh, in our neighborhood because I was going to do something there on the back porch or there in the yard, but we have a lot of work going on in some of the houses around us, and so I just couldn't find a quiet space or spot. So that's why I'm in the vehicle doing this deal. But I got my Bible here with me, and, and I want to read from uh, Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. Very familiar verse when it comes, comes down to talking about joy and, and how that it can do good things for you. Proverbs 17 and 22 says this, A merry heart does good like medicine. Does good like medicine. That word does makes makes medicine even better. A merry heart makes medicine even better. Now, another translation, the uh, translation, the message translation says it this way, that a cheerful disposition is good for your health. We're talking about joy today, which is a good disposition, a merry heart, that joy is something that's it's good for you. It's good for you specifically. Do you know what? You need joy. And as I said, supernatural joy, God-infused, empowered joy. So that's something that you need to say, Lord, fill me with your joy. Because we're not talking about happiness. Happiness is temporary and circumstantially driven. Joy. Come on, say it. Joy. J-O-Y. Joy. God's joy is something that is good for you and good for your health. Now, Joy on it oftentimes is manifested with a good disposition, with laughter, with those things that we can we equate with happiness. And and happiness is an outgrowth of supernatural joy, but it's not the, the birth parent. Do you understand what I'm saying? Happiness, as I said, is circumstantial, temporary. Joy is a, is a gift from the Holy Spirit, the empowerment of, of through our of God in Christ Jesus by the Holy Spirit. So joy is not something the world gave and it's not something the world can take away. Come on, can I get an amen? So we need to lean in and exercise. Come on, exercise that muscle of joy and joy is good for you. Come on, say it with me. Say joy is good for me. It is. God gives it to you. Operate in it. Exercise in it. Here's what it does. You know what joy, laughter, in the physical what it does, it will actually strengthen your immune system. You know, it's a proven fact, a medical science proven fact. I know nowadays we got a lot of things out there that says a whole lot of this or that, but hey, listen, it is a proven fact, medical scientific proven fact that laughter and joy strengthens your immune system. Well, that's not just a natural thing. It's not just a happy thing, circumstantial driven. Hey, everything's roses for you. No, when you got Jesus in your life, you've got the joy of the Holy Spirit. And so we should have strong immune systems as Christians. Not that we don't go through things we do, but we have the joy of the Lord that keeps us buoyant, keeps us up. Do you know joy and laughter also? It lowers your blood pressure. Do you see how the spiritual enhancement moves its way into your natural person? You see, there's so much going on in the world, Pastor. Tony, there's so much taking place. Lean into the joy of the Lord. Uh, the joy of your salvation. Thank God that you're saved. Thank God. Give him praise for the things that are good in your life and trust him with the things that are maybe broken and watch and see if the joy of the Lord will not be your strength, as Nehemiah 8 and 10 says. Laughter and joy strengthens your immune system. It lowers your blood pressure. It counteracts the causes of depression. Boy, the enemy wants to keep so many Christians right now busted, disgusted, and just uh, depressed. The devil is a liar today. There might be a lot of things in your life swirling around you and trying to just suck you down in and put you in a stranglehold of depression. But joy, come on, come on, say, I've got joy in my soul. Joy unspeakable, full of glory. The cheerful disposition of a good of a godly person is healthy. That it does it's good work. It does good work and makes medicine work even better. A merry heart. Father, we stand on this. Come on, I'm praying this with you and declaring it with you as well. We stand on this and say, it is ours. God's supernatural joy is ours. 
Outgrowth of that is happiness. Outgrowth of that is peace. Outgrowth of that is a good, healthy disposition. An outgrowth of that is physically my immune system is strong. My blood pressure is down. Depression is something that might try to latch onto me, but in Jesus' name, it has to go. Why? Because you have the joy of the Lord. Come on, can I get an amen? Why, why, why do we have it? Because if you have Jesus, do you have Jesus? Come on, you have Jesus, wave your hand out there. Jesus is the joy giver. He's the joy giver. John 15, 11 says this, these things I have spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. I told you I got my B-I-B-L-E with me. Here's what it says in John 15. I'll read a couple more verses there. I actually read verse nine on down through 13. As the father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. That means reside, live, remain, hold on, don't let go. Stay in that love. If you keep my commandment, you'll be, you will abide. There it is again in my love, just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. Jesus is the great example. The only example. Verse 11. I just read it to you, but I'll read it to you again. These things I've spoken to you that my joy remain in you and that your joy may be. I love this. Not three fourths, not a fourth, not half full. Your joy remain full. And it's an endowment of God's joy. Jesus is the joy giver. On now to verse 12 and verse 13. It says, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. That keeps your joy full, loving on people, loving other people. And then knowing this, ultimately, that Jesus loved us so much. Verse 13, greater love hath no man than this. Then he lay down his life for his friends. Jesus calls you a friend today. That should allow you to be full of joy. He's encouraging us to love like he lived, loved, to love others. Boy, that's, that's something that should fill up your joy tank. And knowing that you have full joy, supernatural, Holy Spirit empowered joy, and that starts working on your outward man, your immune system is up. Your blood pressure is down. Look how that works. Immune goes up, blood pressure goes down, and then you have the defenses you need to, uh, to ward off depression. So many people and Christians are so depressed today, and there might be some real reasons for it. But ultimately, we need supernatural peace, love, joy, long-suffering. See, these are parts of the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 23. These things are ours, but one of those things, joy, is yours. Jesus is the joy giver. Now, let me just give you a couple of thoughts with this. How can you and I know? If you know that you've got Jesus, you've confessed. Have you confessed Jesus? If you've confessed Jesus in your heart, then the Bible says you're saved. If you've told, if you've told folks, hey, I believe Romans 10, 9 and 10, that I've confessed with my mouth, believe in my heart that I am saved. Jesus is the son of God. You're redeemed. You're saved. That means you're on your way to heaven. If you got that, how can you and I be on our way to heaven, but still look like with our disposition, still act like with our lack of joy and worry and our attitude, act like we're on our way to some other place than heaven. Act like we don't have we don't have entrance into heaven once once death takes place in our life, that being absent with the body is present with the Lord. Man, we need to act like where we're headed. If you know you're on your way to heaven, you need to act like it. If you know Jesus as your Savior, then it should be evident. Come on, somebody. I am preaching to you and me. You know I say it. Every finger pointed out, there are three of my palm pointed back at myself. We need to act like not only we're on our way to heaven, but that we have even the power of God, heaven here on earth. Come on, somebody. Jesus is the joy giver. If you are connected to him, then you need to act like you've got that connection. We need to know there need there needs to be in your life family resemblance. My three children, they don't all act alike. They don't all look alike, but they do have some actions and some looks that you can see that are mine and Gwen's. Well, if we're like Jesus, then there needs some needs to be some family resemblance. And the quickest way to resemble that you're a part of the family of God is joy, 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 joy down in your heart, down in your heart to stay. Paul, you know what? Paul's life was so powerful and full of joy. He wasn't just a great author. He wasn't just a great teacher or an evangelist. You know what? Joy was such a part of his life that it, it honestly, it, it changed the lives of the jailers there that kept him in the jail there in Rome. Paul had such a joy that his jailers were one to Christ and a church sprang up in the household of Caesar. Do you know the Bible says in Philippians 4, 21 on down through 22, they're finishing, Paul's finishing that book there to the Philippian church. And right there at the last, he says, hey, by the way, just greet some folks for me. Tell them that I love them. Every saint in Christ, uh, greet them for me. Let them know I love them. Give a big hug for me. And here's what he said in verse 22, but especially those who are of Caesar's household. 
well, he wasn't hanging out in the Caesar's household. What he was, he was in prison. But man, his joy was so contagious. Boy, isn't that a word for our day right now? Contagent and contagious. There's a lot of things we don't want to pass on, you know, variants and things like this, but we can pass on joy. We can pass on these things that are positively contagious, which is joy, peace, and happiness, and long, long suffering, all these things, byproducts, um, you know, for people's health to get stronger because we got Jesus in our life. Jesus is the joy giver. Man, let's hold on to joy today. I know there's a lot going on, but hold on to your joy for the joy of the Lord is your strength. He was able to touch the household, literally the household of of Caesar because of not only his testimony, but also more probably more importantly, his joy. Why? Because you know what people are, not only is Jesus the joy giver, come on, say that he's a joy giver, but secondly, people are more impacted by your attitude than they are your theology. You know, you might be ragged, but you're acting wrong. If you're right, but you're acting wrong or treating people wrong, then let me just tell you, even though you got the right answer, you're still wrong. You're still wrong. Don't let our good be evilly spoken of. Come on, let's not only have the right answers, but let's more importantly, let our actions speak before our words. People are more impacted by my attitude than they are by me trying to break down the Trinity or trying to talk about eternity. If they can't get past my ugly attitude, how are they going to hear my, my, my positive words? I have to have a good attitude, a joy filled attitude so that it's already pleasant. You can catch more what flies with honey, having a good attitude. And then what? Then you're able to challenge them how to make it through the hard times and to hold on to the good times. See, when people see you and I rejoicing or having a spirit of, uh, of rejoicing, even when, uh, you know, they say there's inflation that's coming, even when there's another variant that's popping off and a lot of folks are affected and afflicted, even, even when we don't see things, you know, happening here in the right way or stuff happening in your personal world or the world at large, um, things that are beyond our control, earthquakes in Haiti, people already just devastated and now being devastated in a greater way in Haiti. It's overwhelming. But when people see you, not you and I acting like some kind of mindless robot that doesn't think, but we know what's going on in our world. We know there are hard times, but we still have a sense of joy because it's not God given. It's not circumstantially based. Joy is good. I don't know how did I say it a moment ago. I didn't mess it up. It is God given. It's not world given. Circumstances don't drive us. The certainty of God's word and God's reality drives us. See, when people see us rejoicing in the hard times, uh, that's when they're going to wonder, man, what's the secret? What's the secret sauce? You know, right now, if I wore this hat into the airport and flew somewhere around the nation and landed there and got out, people would see this. And if they were not familiar with Atlanta, they'd wonder, they'd question, what's, what does 404 mean? What does 404 mean? Well, I'd have to tell them, hey, that's the ATL, baby. That's hot Atlanta, right? I'm just repping Atlanta. But it's, it, it's going to make folks wonder, what does that mean? Well, it's where I'm from. You need to live in a way where that you reflect where you are from. Boy, this, I, I might have to preach this on Sunday. Listen, where are you from? It's indicated by your joy. Your joy is not circumstantially based. It's based on the certainty of Christ. We have joy today. And that's the thing that's in the secret sauce that causes people to say, what's different? What's different about you? They want what you got and what you got is what they need. And what you have is Jesus. And then the joy that he gives. Joy makes people more receptive to the truth. People are more ready to hear what you have to say if you have more of a positive, joy-filled attitude. I know I know. now some of us, we have different dispositions and we could be maybe a little bit more glass half empty than glass half full. But if you got Jesus, you got everything that you need. He empowers, he anoints. Allow him to anoint you and fill your joy to full. As Jesus said, not the world's joy, but my joy I give to you to the full, to the full. You'll always remember the times you've had great belly laughs. Come on, you right now. Remember the last time you just laughed until you had tears streaming down your cheeks. Those are not forgotten moments. A lot of life can be forgotten, but laughter, deep, heavy laughter are moments you just remember because it just it just imprint, imprints your brain. So come on, let laughter flow. The happiness of the world is what is offered by circumstances. We react, we respond to circumstances, but that's temporary. But the joy of the Lord is a choice. Make a choice today to say, Father, Jesus is the joy giver. I can make a greater difference by my attitude reflecting relationship with Jesus because of joy than just having deep theology and understanding all the truths of the Bible. I have to make sure I've got joy first. And then those things are anointed, empowered. See, 
You need to know today, I've already said it a couple times, but Nehemiah 8.10 says, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. Joy is your fuel. Fill up. Come on, fill up. Fill it up full of what? Joy. Joy is the fuel for you to run on. Joy is resourced by our God. Think about that gas station you pull up to, the unleaded that you pay for. You're paying that, that unleaded fuel is the fuel. It's the joy. And the gas station, of course, the resource there is your heavenly father. Your heavenly father has all the resource. The fuel is the joy. God provides the joy. And ultimately, we should rejoice because when we rejoice, it allows you and I, another powerful words I finished today, to rebound. You're able to rebound and bounce back. You get your bounce back ability, baby. Listen, when you have joy, 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 joy down in your heart, down in your heart to stay. Love you guys. I hope this has been something that's encouraged you today. I'm going to be back on continuing to speak on the topic I started this past Sunday. And so you got to make sure that uh, you're here to see, there to hear it in person or be online. We love you guys. We appreciate you so much. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. He be gracious to you. Let this countenance upon you and give you peace and cover you with a name. Better than any other name. That's the name of Jesus. And Jesus does a lot of things. But remind yourself, he does this. He gives hope for today and life for your tomorrows. So stand in your joy. God bless you guys. Have a great rest of your day and your midweek. We'll see you Sunday online or in person.